friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Adana and on this channel we talk about all things stories and self-care. So that's books that we love, books that we want to read, authors that we love, and of course, self-care. If you're interested in that sort of content, definitely subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. With the start of a new year comes new releases and 2022 is no different. So today I wanna to share with you some of the highly anticipated books coming out in the next few months. And this video will only focus on books coming out in January, February, and March. But don't worry, I'll create additional videos talking about other highly anticipated books as we get closer to their release date. So if you're interested in seeing what I'm truly excited about and excited to read that's coming out in the next couple of months, then definitely keep watching. So coming up in January, there are a few new releases in the thriller and high fantasy genre that I'm really looking forward to reading. The first is The Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Siu Lin Tan. This book comes out January 11th and is in the category of high fantasy. It's a story inspired by the legend of the Chinese moon goddess, Shang Yi, in which a young woman's quest to save her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm and sets her on a dangerous path where choices come with deadly consequences consequences and she risks losing more than her heart. This will apparently be the first in a duology uh, which weaves ancient Chinese mythology into sweeping adventure of immortals and magic, of loss and sacrifice, and where love vies with honor, dreams are fraught with betrayal, and hope emerges triumphant. So I am super excited to read this one because besides who became She Who Became the Sun, I really haven't read any books that touch much on Chinese mythology. I, I have read read a quite a, a bit of a high fantasy so it's a combination I guess of a genre that I know with a love for a storyline or a topic that I haven't really had experience in um, but it sounds super interesting so if you're a lover of books based on Chinese mythology or love high fantasy then maybe check out Daughter of a Moon Goddess. The second book releasing in January that I am really excited for is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Wellingham. This book also comes out on January 11th and um, but this one is a thriller that explores explores post-traumatic stress disorder experienced by those left in the wake of a serial killer. So we have Chloe, who is a 32-year-old medical psychologist living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who appears to have it together. However, when she was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. And by the end of that summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life, leaving Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the after. But now as the 20th anniversary of those killings approaches, one after another, after another, after another girl goes missing and the question is, is she paranoid seeing parallels from her past that aren't, aren't actually there or is she, for the second time in her life, about to unmask a killer? Y'all know I love a good thriller, so I'm so excited to get my hands on a copy of this one because I have a strong suspicion that this is going to be the character that, um, you know, it's going to follow the trope of the unreliable narrator, and um, y'all know that's one of my faves. All right, so in February, we have four new releases that fall within the fiction and fantasy genres. The first is This Woven Kingdom by Tare Mafi, and this one comes out on February 1st. It's a young adult fantasy, and it's the first in a epic romantic trilogy inspired by Persian mythology. In this story, Aleze is a disposable servant, not the long lost heir of an ancient Jin kingdom forced to hide in plain sight. The crown prince, Cameron, has heard the prophecies foretelling the death of his king, but he could have never imagined that the servant girl with the strange eyes, the girl he can't put out of his mind, would one day soon uproot his kingdom in the world. So similar to Chinese mythology, I haven't had much experience with Persian mythology, but I am so intrigued by the story. For the summary, I'm getting the vibe that it is a story following the trope of like the ordinary hero isn't really so ordinary and for whatever reason, the truth <laughs> is, you know, revealed and the hero finally learns about their origins. And I really love that trope, so I'm really looking forward to learning more, more about Parisian mythology in one of my favorite tropes. The second book in February that already seems to be getting a lot of fanfare is Black Cake by Shermaine Wilkerson. This debut novel also comes out on February 1st and falls within, I believe, the adult fiction genre. And this book is about how the inheritance of betrayal, secrets, memories, and even like names can shape relationships and 
and history. And in this story, two estranged siblings, Benny and Byron, must set aside their differences to deal with their mother's death and her hidden past. A journey of discovery that takes them from the Caribbean to London to California and ends with her infamous or famous Black Gate. So I love this premise. I'm especially excited to explore the journey through the, the life of a family changed forever by the choices of its matriarch. I find that genre or that trope really interesting and I'm really also excited to learn more about the traditional Caribbean black cake. The third book, which comes out on February 8th, is usually assumed by Layla Sabrine. In this compelling and thought-provoking debut novel, after a terrorist attack rocks the country and anti-Islamic sentiment stirs, three black Muslim girls create a space where they can shatter assumptions and share truths. Our main character, Sabria, along with Zakat and Farah start a blog called You Truly Assumed and the three quickly form a strong friendship. But as the blog's popularity grows, so does the pushback and hateful comments and we all, we all are familiar with that. And then one of them is threatened and then the search to find out who was behind it all begins and their friendship is really put to the test when all three must decide whether to shut down the blog for good or and lose what they worked for or take a stand and risk everything to make their voices heard. So unfortunately, there are honestly not a lot of beautiful portrayals of the multitude of ways to be both black and Muslim while navigating this contemporary world that we live in. So I'm really excited for a book that does make positive black Muslim representat representation a central theme. The last highly anticipated book that I'm excited for comes out on February 22nd and is called Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. This is a young adult contemporary fantasy and honestly the summary pulled me in. Like this is one of the few books on this list that I saw it had such a vague but like ominous summary. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and, and read the summary to you. Don't forget the rule. No one can know what you are, what we are. You must never tell anyone about monsters. Joan has just learned the truth. Her family are monsters with terrifying hidden powers. And the cute boy at work isn't just a boy. He's a legendary monster slayer who will do anything to destroy her family. To save herself and her family, Joan will have to do what she fears most, embrace her own monstrousness. Because in this story, she is not the hero. Right? Right? Like, I love the idea of a story being told from the perspective of, I guess, a villain. And I have a feeling that we'll end up rooting for Joan, even though she's not the hero. I mean, put that in a book with monsters and time travel and magic, and I am in. I'm in. Sign me up. Take my money. Take it all. <laughs> Then moving into Marks, we have a few more fiction and fantasy books that I and a lot of others in the bookish community are really, really looking forward to. The first is the highly anticipated new release, Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This adult fiction book comes out on March 1st and a quick summary of the book. Olivia Pryor has grown up in Merlant School for Girls and all she has of her past is her mother's journal, which seems to unravel into madness. Then a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant. Yet when Olivia arrives, no one is expecting her. But Olivia is not about to leave the first place that feels like home. It doesn't matter if her cousin Matthew is hostile or if she sees half-formed goals haunting the hallways. Olivia knows that Gala is hiding secrets and she is determined to uncover them. When she crosses a ruined wall at just the right moment, Olivia finds herself in a place that is gallant, but not. The manor is crumbling, the goals are solid, and the mysterious figure rules all. Now Olivia sees what has unraveled generations of her family and where her father may have come from. Olivia has always wanted to belong somewhere, but will she take her place as a prior, protecting our world against the master of the house, or will she take her place beside him? I don't know. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. I'll be honest, the only other V.E. Schwab book I read was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRoe, and I thought that one was just okay. However, I, I know that a lot of people love her work, so I'm, I'm willing to give her another shot. I'm gonna give her another chance, and this book plot really does sound super interesting. So I'm excited to get my hands on this one and see if the author is able to change my mind. The next book that I am really excited about is Blood Lion by Deborah Faleye. This young adult fiction 
releases on March 2nd, and it's about one girl's journey of magic, injustice, power, revenge, inspired by Yoruba Nigerian mythology. Okay, I'm noticing a trend here. Um, I'm really intrigued by books that are inspired by different cultural mythologies, like Chinese, Parisian, now Yoruba. But here's a summary. This is what they deserve. They wanted me to be a monster. I will be the worst monster they ever created. 15-year-old Sloane can incinerate an enemy at will. She's a scion, a descendant of the ancient Orisha gods. Under the Lucius' brutal rule, her identity means her death if her powers are discovered. But when she's forcibly conscripted into the Lucius army on her 15th birthday, Sloane sees a new opportunity to overcome the bloody challenge Lucius' training and destroy them from within. So for me, this summary of Sloane strongly, strongly reminds me of Zele from Children of Blood and Bone. And I am honestly here for it. Like I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. And then releasing on March 30th, last but not least, we have The Merciless Ones by Namina Forma. This is the second book in the Gilded Ones trilogy, and it picks up six months after Dekka has freed the goddesses and discovered who she really is. But the real battle has only just begun and, ne and Dekka must lead the charge. Dekka is tasked with freeing the rest of the goddesses. Only as she begins to free them, she begins to see a strange symbol everywhere in places of worship and worn on armor. There's something unnatural about this symbol for her. Just looking at it makes her lose her senses. And even worse, it seems to be repelling her powers. She can't command or communicate with the new death streaks. And in fact, she can't even understand them when they speak. So Dekka knows freeing the goddesses is just the beginning. She can tell whatever deck force out is powerful and there's something sinister out there threatening the kingdom connected to that symbol. Something merciless that her army will need to stop before humanity crumbles. But Dekka's powers are only getting stronger and her strongest weapon could be herself. So for those of us who are interested in seeing how this story continues to play out, we have the second part of our story. And to be honest, the second part in a trilogy is usually where the author loses me. So I'm personally going in with some soft expectations, but I'm really, I'm still excited to see how this story plays out. All right, so that is it. Those are all the highly anticipated books that are coming out in the next few months that I am super excited to read. No surprise, I mean, we have a lot of debut novels, but there are very few debut novels that I've not liked, so <laughs> knock on wood, I think I'll enjoy a lot of these. What do you think? Are any of these books on your list to be read this year? Are there any highly anticipated books that you're looking forward to that I haven't covered? Definitely put them down in the description, in the comments section below, because I'm always looking for, you know, books to add to my TBR and I'm sure others are as well. If you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and hit the like button. Doing so helps YouTube to put this in front of more people like yourself who are looking for diverse bookish content. So black, indigenous, persons of color, women authors, authors from the African diaspora, and stories about those communities. If you haven't yet and you would like to, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified of every new video from me. That's all for me today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!